Welcome everyone to the Airline Summer. Today we're going to look at installing an aircraft into X-Plane 12 and this will be the Flight Factor A320 extended upgrade for X-Plane 12. So when a lot of people see the price their initial reaction is <coughs> So we need to locate our original order, go into the details by clicking on download item and then obtain your discount code and of course treat your discount code like a serial number, do not share it. Onto the checkout, apply the coupon paste in the um, coupon that you've got and when you apply it you'll note now that the total to pay is $20 so I'm just going to go now and complete the checkout process I'm going to go ahead and use xUpdata which I've downloaded from xUpdata.com so we'll run this the first time I'm running this so it of course wants to know where my X-Plane uh, executable is. Okay we've run the X data so we're going to click on the plus side to add a new product and in there we're going to type in my email address and corresponding license key. In this case you are told to use the one from your X plane 11 purchase and then click on check. Do check that if that's not what you want I can see that that matches my folder structure that I've established for my X plane 12 installation. So we're now going to go ahead and click on install. Okay, so I'm going to leave this installing. It's uh, incredibly hot where I am right now, so I'm going to go outside, enjoy the day. I'll leave this running and we'll come back and continue from where we left off. Okay, installation has now finished. This is the first product as well that I've installed into x 12 using the updater. I just go here on the settings. I'm going to leave it for this as release. I would implore you to do that as well uh, because what I want to do is just make sure that this version of the aircraft loads, it's stable and I can do everything what I want to do in it. After that we can then start to play around with betas if we want to do that. At this stage you might want to uncheck the box of show aircraft for older versions of the aircraft and you'll note here that that goes ahead and it hides the X-Plane 11 version and I'm just going to put an asterisk on this so that that's one of my uh, favourites and then go ahead and paste in your serial number. What I'm now going to do is click on activate and now go ahead and reload the aircraft. So let's go and do that. So I use Navigraph to update my data and uh, I use the Navigraph FMS Data Manager. So what you're going to need to do is add in your path for the Flight Factor A320 Ultimate. So we're going to go over here to add on mappings and um, I did try to scan for the add-on, didn't pick it up on my add-on on my um, system. No problem, I've got everything noted down from my previous installation. So I'm just going to click add, select the Flight Factor A320 here, A320 Ultimate from the left hand side and then go over here to install info. Now I'm going to choose X-Plane 11, that will just put a, um, a default name there. Let's go ahead though and click the modify path by doing that and we can see here that it's not picked up the, the right folder name so we're going to go into flight factor and just select that. You don't want to go the level below it so you're just going to select the folder, hit save and now you can go back to your add-on list and as you will see here I've got the uh, X-Plane 12 um, nav data that I need to update and the flight factor one as well so we'll just select them both and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll select update. Okay so it's done the main one that we are talking about in this tutorial the A320 so just verifying that by having a look under the data folder. So it's updated the flight factor A320 it's still doing x -plane, but we can just go into here into the data folder within the A320 folder and you'll note that you've got an updated uh, cycle info and the nav files there match the, uh, the date as well. So to update your Flight Factor A320 Ultimate you're going to come back into the X updater, click on settings just make sure that you've got the preferred release type. In my case I'm just going to choose release Sometimes I'll play with the betas, but I tend to have a separate installation for that. So we know that we've got an update available. What we'll do now, just click OK to get rid of that, and then we can click here to update it, or one of the buttons up there. Be um, 
cautious around the fresh installation no problem in doing that if that is what you want but it's as it says it will delete your custom files and talking to somebody recently it will also delete your joystick preferences for that particular aircraft so if that's what you want fine i'm not going to tick it in this case my goal is just to update the current version to the latest so okay off it goes it is done so we can click on the release notes and the version that we're expecting for this upgrade is 1.7.3 you can also confirm the version from the version.ini uh, file that you'll find within your data folder within your main flight factor a320 ultimate folder let's go and do some flying so back in the sim i'm being prompted to reactivate my product so just a matter of pasting in the serial number, clicking on uh, activate, and it now wants me to reload the aircraft. I found it more straightforward over my years using X-Plane 11 and 12, um, no matter what the developer, just exit X-Plane and just go back into it. So I'm just going to walk you through a few settings and they're the, the main settings that I configured when I installed the aircraft back into X-Plane 12. But please do note that this is not a substitute for consulting the official documentation. So please do consult that in addition to what I'm saying here. So let's start with our hardware. And the first thing I did was created a separate profile for this aircraft. And in terms of the throttles, so I use the Thrustmaster, as you can see. For both throttles, I've done a response curve, and that's exactly in line with the flight fact documentation. Just going to edit that, just so that you can see what I've got set here. So the main thing is CAT, MUL, ROM, and the various uh, settings here from full reverse, beta, idle, alpha, alpha, alpha and if you just think about this as like a mathematical formula that's the x-axis and the input and the y-axis with the output so basically I'm just going to now move throttle one up to my climb detent and you can see there that that dot matches where my climb detent is if it didn't you just need to twiddle the output line here by dragging that up etc so if I wanted to move that up a bit or down a bit what this is basically saying is for an input of 0.51 output 0.69 in that case output 0.71 um, just need to twiddle with those until you get them to match your specific hardware I'm just going to cancel that as I say very brief look let's look at the side stick um, on one of mine I've got a response curve so it's not that one it's the roll itself I've got a bit of a uh, null zone here that I've configured for my roll and that's just because sometimes I'm a bit sloppy with the pitch axis and I do tend to introduce a bit of unwanted roll in there so um, that's the, the reason for that dead zone and then for the first part, as I move the stick, say left. So basically the exponential curve there is giving me more of an output in say the first 50% um, of the travel. And then as we do the last 50% of travel, we're going up to the maximum, but in a much more gradual manner. So you've got a plethora of features and options on the EFB. Let's go to the settings tab, services, and this is where you can add your SimBrief ID. You might find this one useful, EFB tabs. I've deselected the map and the browser tabs from here, uh, as I don't use those. On the config tab, synchronize EFIS Sparrow, so whatever. Uh, Q and H you select on the captain side is automatically synced onto the FO side. Occasionally I will use pause at top of descent as well. Okay so a new feature in 1.7.3 that I'm really excited and looking forward to using is the performance calculator here. So just in summary when you click on get it will fish out the runway length heading etc 
from uh, the flight plan that's in your FMS. The conditions here are the real world conditions, i.e. what it reads from the X-plane weather engine. And then down here, the takeoff weight is what it reads. You can choose various settings here, for example, if you want a config 3 departure, flex, toga, etc. Whether you are going to use anti-ice or air conditioning on, uh, on your departure, calculate that. And then these values over here, once they're available, you can click set and that will go and automatically fill those in in the performance page within the FMS. So that's looking really cool and looking forward to using that. Okay, so in summary, we've covered off how to buy the Flight Factor A320 Ultimate Upgrade and how to install it. Then we took a look at how to update the error cycle using the Navigraph FMS Data Manager. We've took a look then at updating and maintaining the product. And then we've gone over some settings on the EFB that I hope that you found useful. So please do like, subscribe, any comments or questions, drop them in the comments below and I will see you on another video. Thank you. Bye bye.